I used to have the scavenger hunt type YouTube channel. It didn't last very long, and I didn't earn many subscribers, as I was forced to delete it, or else face some severe consequences. My channel was designed specifically to promote my artwork. It was a kind of zany, cartoony, over-the-top style, with a lot of negative space, shading, and shadow. To try to rise above the other channels, I designed an interactive contest with prizes to attract attention. While working late nights as an Uber driver, I would find remote yet interesting spots and spray paint a symbol on the side of the building or a tree or anything large enough to serve as a canvas. My theme was sets of threes. So for example, I would spray paint the words good, bad, and ugly in three random places and would leave clues on my channel as to where my latest graffiti images were located. The first person to send me screenshots of the set would win a gift card or a framed piece of art of their choosing, something along those lines. This might sound familiar to a handful of you. Let me emphasize, I was never a dick about where I spray painted. I never vandalized someone else's car or house, nothing like that. I normally stuck to places where there was already plenty of graffiti. Under overpasses, on the side of abandoned buildings, street signs on quiet roads, or on sidewalks near local attractions. I even painted under a trash can lid. I wasn't ever super obvious about where I put them, but because I wanted it to be a fun challenge, and I also didn't want my viewers in trouble for trespassing or anything, I left them all in public places so that no one would have to climb or anything to find it. I did it a total of five times. I eventually switched it up to small pictures. I did bacon, lettuce, and tomato, red duck, blue duck, and green duck, and the sea, here, speak no evil monkeys. Each produced a different winner, usually only after a couple of days, almost always college kids. Last I checked, Green Duck has since been painted over, but all the others should still be there. The fifth scavenger contest is where things went wrong. My theme was rock, paper, scissors. I drove around between midnight and 1 a.m. and hit one on the back of a street sign, another under a low-hanging tree branch on a public bike path, and the last one on a flight of stairs to the metro. I made sure to put a little extra detail into the designs to better emphasize that they were mine. I hadn't been home for more than 10 minutes when I got a new notification. It was barely 1.30. I opened the email and discovered that someone had already found and took a photo of all three. But what really made me uncomfortable wasn't the fact that he requested his prize be a pound of my own flesh. It was the red handprints covering all three of my spray-painted symbols. I knew enough about paint to know that the handprints weren't just graffiti of their own. The drip pattern told me all that I needed to know. After about ten minutes of confusion, I got back in my car and drove to the police station. When I explained the situation and showed the officer on duty the pictures, I was immediately arrested and taken into the back room to await a detective. Only about 15 minutes earlier, a call was made that a person had been found stabbed three times at the metro station. For the rest of that night and into the following day, I was interrogated by the police, who were blunt but surprisingly patient with me. They took my phone and later showed me the photos enhanced. In the street sign picture, they caught a partial reflection of a person in a car and determined that it was someone much taller than I was, stating that he had been abducted and stabbed three times and then was left to bleed out. My driver's license picture was given to him for a photo identification, and apparently he cleared me, not even knowing who I was. The internet article that was written about this incident was incredibly vague, only mentioning that there was a stabbing and that the victim was in stable condition. It said nothing about the pictures, the graffiti, or even how many times he was stabbed. I gave the police the email address and was told to monitor my YouTube account for a while to see if he contacted me again. Eventually, a detective came to my house and questioned me again and suggested before he left that I remove my channel for my own safety. I don't know if they ever identified or apprehended the assailant, and I never spoke to the victim. 
but I was informed that he did pull through. He had no idea why he was selected. I'm still not sure if someone was out to send me a message, but it left me shaken. I don't want to give away too many details, but this happened on the East Coast United States in the spring of 2015. I'm writing this more out of curiosity than anything else. If anyone has heard about a break in the case or a similar attack, please let me know in the comments down below. It's genuinely unnerving to have been indirectly involved in something like this and then having no closure whatsoever. When I was a kid, I lived in a heavily forested area of New Jersey. During the summer, me and my friends would get absolutely shit-faced, drive around on our dirt bikes, and wreak all kinds of havoc. The story I get asked to share the most happened to me in the summer between high school and college. Both me and my friend's right arms were in casts because we had both gotten drunk and stupid the weekend before and had both taken a hard turn on a dirt path in the rain, seconds apart. And to make a long story short, we both ended up breaking the same bone. It was nuts, but it didn't teach us anything because we were both out there a week later with our other friends spray painting the side of a barn. We had no finesse whatsoever. It would just randomly graffiti profanities, crude drawings, and other random nonsense all over the barn, trying to one-up each other. We were being loud and obnoxious, and spray painting on each other's shoes, stupid stuff like that. The sun was setting, and we hadn't thought to bring flashlights. We were all still horsing around as it got darker, not giving any thought to how difficult it probably would be to navigate the field back to the road practically blind and very drunk. That's when this weird sensation washed over me. I tried my best to ignore it. I figured it was paranoia brought on by the booze. But the air around us suddenly seemed to feel different, and I got the feeling like I was being targeted. It was as if I was being examined in great detail. My other friend with a cast was the first to openly state his mind on the frightening sensation but I immediately denied it. I was drunk and rude and hoping that if we all ignored it, whatever it was, it would pass. About 40 or 50 yards away was the tree line and after another minute of us being stupid and not making our way back to the car, there came an extremely loud sound. Something was shaking the higher branches of the trees within our line of sight. Through the faint darkness, we spotted the particular tree that was shuddering. There was a light breeze, but not nearly enough wind to make the branches whip around like that. Even if there was, it was only that particular tree that was moving. Being the smartass that I am, I yelled something extremely crude, presuming that it was a random stranger. But my friends immediately told me to shut up. That's when I think the seriousness of the situation really hit me. I had been up in trees plenty of times, and I knew that I couldn't make a ruckus like that even if I threw my entire body weight around. It was as though at least two people were in the tree, and they were trying to bring the tree down by swaying it back and forth. To this day, I still haven't seen anything exactly like it. The fury and intensity behind the way those branches were shaking... I had had enough. I immediately started power walking away, but none of my friends moved. They were transfixed. I was about to say something when a deafening sound made my heart leap into my throat. There was a moment of silence and then a crashing sound as we heard it leap into another tree. At least we assume that's what happened. I saw another tree lean sharply to one side, like something heavy just landed among the top branches. I was already running at that point, and my friends were right behind me. The sound of the branches quaking, lighting a fire under our collective asses. One of my stupid friends tripped and twisted his ankle, and we nearly left him behind. But we stopped to help him up and half carried him to the car. Once inside, my friend gunned the engine, and even sitting on top of that sound, 
They could still hear the groan of the trees thrashing about. I remember the harsh smell of spray paint mixed with my sweat and the pain in my arm as it throbbed after all the running. I felt incredibly stupid and even more lucky to be alive. We never saw exactly what was in the trees, but we all claimed during the ride home that whatever it had been was huge. It had either leapt from one tree to another, or perhaps a second one had come to join it in a neighboring tree. Many years later, I watched Animal Planet and go online looking at videos of different animals climbing through trees, trying to find anything close to what we saw and heard. I once watched a leopard on TV dragging its prey up into a tree while it was still thrashing. I remember how my heart sank. What if the thing we heard was battling with something, trying to overpower another living thing so it could become its prey? What if we were witnesses to something being violently slaughtered? Sometimes I joke that it was the Jersey Devil, but only half-heartedly. The thought lives in the back of my mind constantly. What exactly did we encounter that night?